Bama plays football. Notre Dame plays politics. In your heart, you know we're number one. That was the cry of many Alabama fans after the 1966 season as the Alabama Crimson Tide ended the year undefeated and untied, yet placed third in the final polls that saw Notre Dame and Michigan State in the season 9-0-1 after playing for a tie. Hi, I'm Katie Winslet here in the film archives at the Paul W. Bryant Museum. Today, we're going to look and see how the Tide became the only untied and undefeated team in college football in 1966. The quest for perfection started at Birmingham's Legion Field with a 34-0 win over Louisiana Tech. The Tide started slow but quickly outmatched their opponent. Kenny Stabler threw for two touchdowns and ran for one more. Quarterbacks Wayne Trimble and Joe Kelly both engineered a touchdown drive apiece and the Bama defense recorded its first shutout of the season. The next week, Alabama opened SEC play on the road against an Ole Miss team that had come one point shy of beating the Tide the year before. The Rebels set out for revenge this day only to be denied by Alabama's great defensive effort that Coach Bryant described as something extra. Alabama's defense intercepted three Ole Miss passes and recovered one fumble under the lights in Jackson. Quarterback Kenny Stabler completed 16 out of 19 passes behind excellent protection of his offensive line. The final score was Alabama 17, Ole Miss 7, with the Tide heading back home to face the Tigers of Clemson. An undefeated Alabama team came into Denny Stadium for their first home game of the season. The Tide ranked number four nationally realized an upset by Frank Howard's Clemson Tigers would severely damage their hopes at a national championship. Alabama's first score of the day came in the first quarter from a stabler pass to Dennis Homan in the end zone. By halftime, 10 more points had been added to Alabama's side of Denny Stadium's new scoreboard. Stabler scored a third quarter touchdown to make the score 23 to nothing. Alabama tacked on a field goal in the fourth to make the final score Alabama 26, Clemson 0, and set up an epic matchup for the third Saturday in October. It was a rainy day in Knoxville on Saturday, October 15, 1966. Alabama met Tennessee in what was built as the SEC game of the season. The Crimson Tide fought with their backs to the wall behind a 10-0 deficit all afternoon. As the fourth quarter started, the tide began to change. Stabler threw a pass to Ray Perkins to put Alabama in scoring range, with the Tide eventually scoring and going for two, giving the good guys eight points, just two shy of Tennessee's score. With three minutes and 23 seconds left in the game, Alabama got the ball and found it virtually unable to score a winning touchdown. There was one chance to win. From 17 yards, Steve Davis kicked a field goal, making the score Alabama 11, Tennessee 10. Tennessee fought back with 16 seconds to go and no timeouts and attempted what looked to be a sure field goal. The Vols missed and Alabama claimed victory with an 11-10 win. The win gave the Tide a 4-0 record for the Commodores of Vanderbilt next. Alabama versus Vanderbilt saw the Crimson Tide do what all expected and rout the Commodores. Vanderbilt coach Jack Green was quoted as saying, trying to beat Alabama is like trying to beat a train wreck. The Tide jumped ahead 7-0 with only a minute and a half gone from the game. From that point on, it was just a matter of how much. The Tide cruised to a 42-6 win. Paul Bryant sent 57 Crimson Tides men out to play and Alabama has scored all 42 points by the third quarter.
The win gave the Tide a 5-0 record heading back to Tuscaloosa with a matchup with the Bulldogs of Mississippi State. The Alabama-Mississippi State matchup saw quarterback Wayne Trimble etch his name in the archives of Alabama football by guiding the Tide to a 27-14 victory over the Bulldogs. The Tide scored first with a 35-yard field goal in the second quarter, then scored on a Trimble to Perkins pass of 26 yards to make the halftime score 10 to nothing. Alabama added a third quarter field goal, but Mississippi State responded with a touchdown in the fourth. The Tide then scored on a Trimble to Jerry Duncan 48 yard pass and then another to Perkins of 37 yards. State scored another touchdown giving them 14 points, which would be the most points Alabama would give up all season. The seventh game of the season saw a great effort from the Tide's defense holding LSU to only 90 yards total offense and scoring eight points in the game. Two of those points came within the first minute of play as the Tide defense blocked a punt and scored a safety. Alabama's next two drives ended in field goals of 24 and 32 yards. The defense then flexed its muscles when Bobby Jones intercepted an LSU pass and carried it back 33 yards for the score. The Tide then wrapped up the scoring with a three-yard run by Frank Canterbury. Final score, Alabama 21 and LSU 0. It's homecoming at the Capstone as the Crimson Tide takes on the South Carolina Gamecocks. Alabama dominated from opening kickoff. Going 57 yards on the opening drive, which was capped off by a one-yard David Chatwood touchdown run. Trimble led two scoring drives of 52 yards in the second quarter and another of 58 yards in the third. Perhaps the highlight of this homecoming game was the presence of Alabama's own Jim Neighbors as he was on hand to participate in homecoming activities. Steve Davis added a field goal in the fourth and Alabama claimed victory this day 24 to nothing over South Carolina. The Southern Miss Golden Eagles were next on the list. Alabama jumped ahead with a two touchdown lead with scoring passes to Perkins and Cook in the second quarter making the score 12 to nothing going into the half. As the second half began, Alabama scored on a David Chatwood run of 13 yards. Bama would score two more times in the fourth, one a 55-yard touchdown pass, and the other a one-yard run by quarterback Joe Kelly. Alabama had won its 15th straight game, ninth of the season, playing 59 of the 61 players on hand for the game. Next was the annual Iron Bowl game against Auburn at Legion Field. Alabama opened the scoring with a 63-yard touchdown pass to Ray Perkins in the second quarter. Then Alabama scored again on a one-yard run by Kelly. The Tide added a field goal just before half, making it 17-0. In the second half, the Tide scored a 12-yard touchdown run to make the score 24-0. Alabama ended the scoring for the afternoon with a Trimble to Sutton 41-yard touchdown pass and cruised to victory over Auburn 31 to nothing. At 10 wins, zero losses, and no ties, the Tide found themselves destined to the Sugar Bowl to face the Cornhuskers of Nebraska, the same team they faced before in the Orange Bowl the previous year. January 2nd, 1967, New Orleans, the Sugar Bowl. The Tide wasted little time in this game, catching fire on the first play, which was a pass to Perkins from Stabler for 60 yards. Les Kelly scored the touchdown on a one-yard plunge. Alabama also scored on their second drive of the game on a nine-yard option play by Kenny Stabler. The 
tied, then scored again on their third drive that was then followed by a second quarter Trimble touchdown run of 6 yards. In the third quarter, Davis added a field goal of 30 yards. The Cornhuskers finally scored in the final quarter to end the shutout bid, and Alabama responded with a 40-yard touchdown pass to Perkins. The game came to an end with an Alabama victory of 34-7 over Nebraska, and with that remained the only undefeated, untied team in the country. Alabama won and kept on winning in 1966. Long after, number one and number two had marred their records with a tie and chose not to play in a bowl game. As Sports Illustrated said in an editorial, now be honest, Notre Dame and Michigan State, would you really want to play Alabama? We think not. I'm Katie Winslet. Thanks for watching. Roll Tide.